There may be no energy-related startup in our region that's attracted more national and international attention than Aquion Energy. And it's because of its aqueous hybrid ion battery, the Think Saltwater battery. The battery won the World Technology Award in 2011, and Aquion was recognized by MIT Tech Review among 50 disruptive companies. The technology came out of the lab right here at Carnegie Mellon University. The founder and chief technology officer of Aquion is Jay Whitaker. He's a professor here at Carnegie Mellon, and welcome, good to have you. Great to be here. Yeah, well this is exciting stuff, a tremendous amount of attention uh, at, at energy storage and its role in the grid. What got you interested in, in, in this problem? Well, I, when I came to CMU, the, the first thing I did was to look for technical holes, where it was something that I was good at, where there wasn't a good answer technically. And stationary storage that was low cost and long life and environmentally benign just really wasn't out there as an offering to the marketplace. And so I took it upon myself to, to not start a company at the time, but just to do some research as to what that might look like if it were to be a product and to understand sort of the boundary conditions and the economics behind it. Uh, and as I went through that process, I started to think, well, maybe I'll take a crack at making something that could do that. Uh, and it evolved from there. Hmm. And, and you'd come to this out of the space program, of all things. Yeah, yeah, I was at NASA, I was at the Jet Propulsion Lab, and the stuff that we did there was entirely different, right? The, the kinds of batteries you might put in the surface of Mars, or you might put in very deep space, which is what we focused on. Um, very different kinds of applications, but the electric chemistry is not too different. Like you still have to find materials that are active, that that are that are robust, that do their energy storage function without uh, losing their ability to do so over long periods of time. And so, uh, surprisingly, a lot of what I learned there ported right over to this, to this problem. And when you think about the, the, the grid and sort of the future of energy, why is storage such a critical challenge to be solved? Uh, so it wouldn't be if we didn't care about global carbon emissions. But because we do, uh, there's a lot more incentive, I think a lot more interest now in inserting more renewables into the, the electric power stream. The more you put renewables into the portfolio of electric generation, the more unstable, in general, the grid could become uh, for a variety of reasons, right? The, the, the wind blows, the sun sets, and you'll have this intermittent sort of supply of power. And so batteries are sort of a buffer between that intermittent sort of primal power supply and what it is we end up using uh, on a daily basis and we turn the lights on. Uh, and so the, the right kind of energy storage put in the right places can really make a huge difference. And that's uh, for large grid-tied grid places. We're also finding that there's a lot of places around the world where there is no grid. Mm. And people have historically used diesel generators, and they're, they're realizing now that diesel is difficult to maintain, it's expensive as a fuel, uh, and solar panels are really cheap now. So putting one of our, solar, one of our batteries with a solar panel somewhere off-grid or somewhere where the, there's very expensive electricity makes a lot of sense already. So you're not talking just big grid installations, but these could be batteries that could be in a much smaller array yeah. at some point? Yeah, in fact, yeah. that's our market entry point. We're going for what we call the distributed energy market. There's a lot of places, um, not so much in North America, but Hawaii, uh, Germany, Australia, the Philippines, Malaysia, South uh, Pacific in general, where there's a, a lot of interest in residence or business or community s size things, distributed power systems. They're usually based on solar or wind, and they need energy storage to make, make it work. Um, and it, that's a great market for a company like Aquion. Our production throughput is, is not big enough to do a 100 or 200 megawatt hour grid tied storage installation right now, but we can send out literally hundreds or even thousands of these smaller units, collect data, learn from the market, improve our product, cost it down, so that when we do start to create much larger products next year or even late this year, we'll have uh, all those learnings under our belt. Is salt water technology, is it better for the environment than all yes. these other types of batteries we're always told we're not supposed to throw away? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. If you look at the sort of the bill of materials in our battery, and we've actually gone through the, the process of becoming cradle to cradle certified, which means we are truly a sustainable technology. People have, we, we've brought in an external analysis firm they come in and certify us as being truly sustainable. So their, their job is to look at the supply chain where we get our materials and look at what's inside our product. And we have passed their bronze level sort of uh, designation, which means that we are uh, landf landfill uh, disposable, not that we would, we intend to recycle, but there's nothing inside the battery that's harmful to the environment. It's uh, you know very common materials, it's manganese, it's titania, it's sulfates, it's uh, lithium and sodium ions that are just like you would have in, in the salt shaker. So those things are really important. No other battery chemistry can, can do that. 
Uh, and there's a lot of places around the world where this sustainable uh, you know, certification is extremely important because either, either from a, a flammability perspective, it doesn't burn and we save a lot of money for people who want to do batteries. They also have to install fire mitigation systems. That's expensive. Um, and also just some people have a mandate to only put sustainable technologies in their facilities. And again, we're the only battery that can meet that, that bar. So how rapidly can this be deployed? When is there going to be one kind of connected That's a good everybody's question. solar so, yeah, panel? The sooner the better. Uh, so we shipped 15 megawatt hours last year. Uh, we have a, a plant in, in Westmoreland County and we're producing, we are currently sold out for most of this year, at least through Q4 of this year. We're going to double our production this year from over last year and probably double it even more next year. So we're, we're definitely ramping up pretty quickly right now. Uh, we're trying to do responsible growth. We're trying to make sure we're putting our, our products in the right hands and getting data back from it to make sure as we improve the product, it, it is meeting all the sort of standards of, of our customer base. Wow, well, it's so exciting to hear yeah, all this happening really right here out of Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been so a crazy ride. Jay Whitaker, thank you so much. Thank you really so much, I really it. appreciate it. Yeah. And next up, new approaches to energy and the environment that are likely to remake the cities we live in. We'll focus on the future when our region's business returns to Scott Hall at Carnegie Mellon University. Stay with us.